This lesson is for Windows users only. If you're using Linux, you can skip to the next one. The assembler used in this course is NASM, the NetWide Assembler, NASM. It's ready to be downloaded and run for both DOS and Windows, so you can use either one. You could get both if you prefer. They have the same names and they work the same way, but all you have to do is put them in separate directories. Then you can run whichever one you'd like. But if you're running Windows, the one for Win32 is the one I suggest. Go to this website, www.nasm.us. Here you'll find news about the current status of the assembler and links to other information. Nothing on the internet always stays the same, but this is what it looked like when I put together this course. At the top of the page, you see a link for download. When you click on it, you got a list of directory names. Each directory contains one version of the assembler. When I did it, as you can see, the newest versions were at the top of the list, and the release date of each one was on the right. Notice that the top ones have the letters RC in their names. That stands for Release Candidate. They are future release versions that are not fully tested yet. Go to the latest one that is not a release candidate. In the example I'm showing you, that is version 2.05.01. It's a directory filled with files that can be downloaded. You want to download the zip file with Win32 in its name. It's the only one you'll need. You'll be surprised at how fast the download is. The files are very small. Create a directory to hold it and place the zip file in that directory. When you unzip the file, your directory will look like this. It has a new subdirectory with the same name as the version of the assembler. In that directory is a file named nasm.exe. It's the only file you need. That one file is the complete ready-to-run assembler. All you have to do is either copy that file to some directory that's on your path or modify your path to include this new directory. Either way, you want to be able to type in nasm on the command line from any directory and cause the assembler to run. You should get this error message when you specify the name. If you specify the H option, you get a help screen. Once you've got that, you're ready to go with the assembler. But that's not all you need. You'll also need a linker to be able to paste modules together into programs. If you already have a commercial linker on your system, that's fine. You can use that. The linker named A-Link is available from SourceForge. You may want to jot down this web page address so you can come back if you need to get some documentation for it. It's easy to download a ready-to-run version of it. When you download the Win32 version of the linker, you'll get a zip file. This file is even smaller than the one you downloaded before. Create a directory, any directory, to hold it. Then unzip the file and copy alink.exe into that same directory. You can use the same one as the assembler. That's because alink also must be on your path so you can execute it from anywhere. To test it, enter its name with no arguments, and you should get a screen full of options and explanations. Don't worry about how it works now. That comes in a later lesson. You should already have the debug utility installed. It comes with Windows. To run it, just enter the word debug and press return. If it runs, it should display the minus sign as a prompt like this. By entering R, you can get a list of the registers. And the names of all the flags that are currently set. Don't worry about the contents of the registers right now. More about that later. And you can quit the debugger by entering the letter Q.
Now, if your debugger doesn't run, that's probably because it's not on your path. Locate the file named debug.exe and put it on your path. Then try again. You've got one more thing to get installed if you don't already have it. You will need a text editor. There are lots of them, and I'm the last person you should look to for a recommendation. The one I use is very old and has an odd set of commands, but I've used it for so long I'm afraid to try to change. Once you find a text editor that you like, you'll feel the same way about it. But once that's done, you'll be ready to go. You can skip the next lesson. It's installation information for the Linux system.